This is a Nexus Special, Episode 50, the Nintendo Switch, Reveal, on January 20th, 2017. And now, well, maybe not the reveal, but we don't really know what to call it. This Nexus Special is hosted by Savannah Haslow and Ian R. Buck. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns50. So, yeah, the reason we're not really sure if we should call this the reveal or not is because technically the switch was announced way back in october and we got to see like a trailer for it that showed us all of like the different configurations that you can play with it on uh and we even got to see like some of the games that are coming for it but they didn't give us any like solid details until a week ago when they had like a a big giant hour and a half long stream yeah so it is what it is uh this is you know they're they're details that they're telling us soon before launch uh and uh, and we'll just roll with it pretty sure they're doing that just for the hype yeah well ride yeah. the hype into sales oh in terms of the specific timing yeah of it in terms of yeah yeah probably um so if you want to yeah watch their whole presentation video uh we've got a link to that in the show notes um we also have uh a link to like that that first trailer All right, so before we get into things, uh, I think it would be useful for us to talk about our own personal history with Nintendo, since that is definitely going to color our approach to this device. Right. I am the most Nintendo savvy of the two of us. Uh, I started out on a Super Nintendo when I was very small, because my grandparents owned it. Played a lot of Super Mario All-Stars, and... uh, I was not allowed to get a handheld device for a long time because my dad was against them. However, my aunt and uncle went behind his back one Christmas and it got me and my brother a shared Game Boy Advance. And since then, I have owned every iteration of the handheld consoles. Um, I have owned a Wii and a GameCube. Um, I play massive amounts of Pokemon, Ace Attorney, and... uh, What else? Animal Crossing? I do that. And then I, well, I play Animal Crossing and and then I stop for a couple days and then never return to my town because I'm scared to see it. (laughs) And I'm sure that's a common feeling among Animal Crossing players. Yeah, I um, am kind of at the other extreme uh, because the one and only Nintendo device that I owned was a uh, Game Boy Color that I got as a hand me up from my younger brother. Um, who in turn got it from like our cousin. Uh, so by the time I had it, uh, you know, it had the battery cover had long since been uh, broken off. It just had like some duct tape holding the batteries in. Uh, I had a single game on it, and that was a uh, Pokemon Crystal version. Um, and uh, and yeah, until until our family got a Wii, that was pretty much the only Nintendo device that I ever interacted with. Um, And even when we did get the Wii, um, that was like a a gift from my mom's side of the family to, you know, the the five of us who all have birthdays at about the same time of year. And I immediately, uh, you know, was like, I I don't want this at all. So uh, after the party, I, I talked to my family and I was like, can I like share, like I actually did the math, figured out how much the market value of a Wii was and divided that by like however many people it had been gifted to. And I was like, can I just like, sell my share of this to you guys and then i'll like seed all permission to use it uh and then i went and used that money for something else yeah lame it's well you know fairness justice yeah in the buck household (laughs) and you are primarily a pc gamer yep yep so i definitely come at this from the direction of uh all of my devices must be able to do all of the things that i that i require any of them to do. Um, so they started off their presentation a week ago, the the announcement one, not the announcement, the reveal one, whatever. Uh, they started off with uh, this kind of nice section where they were talking about all the previous consoles that they've had and showing us what it was from the each of those consoles that the switch inherits right mm-hmm. and i i really like this uh this segment because um i mean nobody's going to forget all of the consoles that like nintendo's made but it it was really nice to see the common threads between them all right right 
So this started off with the NES, um, and they it has the basic controller, um, but they emphasized that it came with two of them, right? Mm -hmm. So you could play with other people. That's an interesting point to note, and we'll get to that later. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, all of these will like tie into things that we'll be talking about later. Uh, the Game Boy was next, and they said that it can bring games out of the home. Hmm. That's a huge deal. Very, yeah. The SNES added bumpers and the XY buttons to the controllers. So just giving, like, game developers more control options. Mm -hmm. The N64 added the analog stick and the rumble pack. Ooh. <laughs> Which, I mean, at the time, is, like, pretty darn cool. Yeah. The GameCube had a carry handle. Why? Yeah, I, I feel like they were really stretching there for... They were trying. Mm-hmm. And even, like, the guy who was up there on stage kind of knowingly looked at the audience and was like, yeah, we were a little ahead of our time on that one. <laughs> Wink. Like, <laughs> um, the DS has a touchscreen. Mm -hmm. The Wii added motion controls. Uh, and I would argue probably out of all of these, that was, like, the biggest game changer in the, the entire gaming industry, right? Do you think? I think so. Because, I mean, yeah, analog sticks are a big deal. Um, but like, but it's not like we didn't have the technology to make analog sticks before that, right? Right. Motion controls was like literally something that we had never had in a consumer product. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then the Wii U, um, the, they say that you can play games without the TV on your home console. So that's coming to the Switch as well. Mm -hmm. They did not mention the 3DS. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like the 3DS was just... A an amalgamation of everything that came before in a different way. You yeah, know what I mean? It I, didn't introduce anything particularly new, but I could see this whole, um, almost all of these being pertinent to the 3DS as well. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, though, if, if we take a look at it from like a broader gaming industry perspective, like the 3DS is still the only thing that you can use that has 3D without having to have, like, 3D glasses. Yeah, but nobody likes it. I know. So yeah. it's kind of irrelevant. So they're kind of, yeah, they're kind of avoiding uh, <laughs> attaching that one. I don't think the Switch has any kind of 3D. No, that's why they didn't mention right. it. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's get right into that Switch thing, because uh, if, if you're trying to figure out what, how all of these different things that they were talking about fit together into one console, uh, it might be kind of tricky. Um, but it actually, it, it does all fit together pretty darn well mm -hmm. in the end. So the Switch console, uh, from a hardware perspective, is uh, the unit itself is a 6.2 inch tablet. Uh, but the default for it is not like using it as a tablet it's using it as a home console so it comes with like a little dock that you slide it into and that plugs it into the television right um but the reason it's a tablet of course is because you can take it with you play games on it and you don't have to change what games you're playing right mm -hmm. so this is like kind of taking the 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 tie-ins that they had between like the wii u and the 3ds right where they were s releasing some titles on both of them at the same time and you could like cross play and everything right this is like boiling that down to just one device mm -hmm. um can do can do all of it that is really nice it is really really nice yeah um so the the console itself um it has uh, a little kickstand on the back so that you can like you know bring it with you put it on a table and stand it up mm -hmm. uh, and play with it it charges via a USB Type-C port on the bottom. That's interesting, because this is Nintendo, and Nintendo has not really gone with mass-produced uh, standards. Standards, yeah. Right, <laughs> yeah. And I am so, so thankful that they're doing that, uh, especially, like, just in time for USB Type-C to really be, you know, get big. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're fast, fast approaching the day when I can leave the house and just have like one cable that's going to charge all of my devices. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. Uh, so they say that when you're using it as a tablet, uh, it gets anywhere from two and a half to six and a half hours of battery life, depending on what games you're playing on it. And that is a very good. My Surface Pro 4 tends to get about six hours of video life out of it mm -hmm. um, on battery. And for playing an intensive game... 
that's that's incredible right yeah and if we if we take a look at the nvidia shield tablet that i have which is pretty much the closest equivalent that exists in the world right now um definitely comparable uh battery life Mm -hmm. so i'm pretty happy with that um and like we said since it charges with the standard port uh it's not going to be too difficult to charge it like while you're on the go you're not going to have to go and find a an outlet. You could just use a portable battery that you have with you in your backpack. They want you to take this with you and use it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it has a capacitive touchscreen. Yay! Which is also a first for Nintendo. Yeah. And gosh, that's uh, about time. <laughs> <laughs> they probably should have had that a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, frankly, it would have it would have just been like a joke to compare it to to tablets if it didn't have a capacitive touch. Screen. Right. Um, they also want to enable you to play with other people, like in as many ways as possible. One of those ways is uh, the consoles can all create like an ad hoc network with each other. Um, so up to eight switches can connect to each other for multiplayer. Um, which is very similar, I think, to what 3DSs can do, because I've seen a lot of students, like, hooking up their 3DSs together yeah. to play Smash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, of course, eight players is a significant number, because that is also the maximum number of players you can have in Super Smash Bros. Right. Um, it comes with 32 gigabytes of storage on the inside. Not a lot. Not a lot, especially, especially if you compare that to other consoles. If you compare that to other tablets... It's not a lot, but it's not little either. Right. Right. Um, however, it is expandable via micro SD. Uh, the the type of micro SD card that it takes uh, supports up to twelve ter- or twelve ter- two terabytes. Which is interesting because they don't make two terabyte micro nope. SD cards yet. Yeah, the the biggest ones on the market right now are five hundred and twelve gigabytes. So future proof in that sense. Yep. That's nice. Um. On the storage front, it's unclear whether or not the USB-C port will allow you to plug that into external hard drives or something like that. Um, I believe that the Wii U can do that, so I wouldn't be surprised if it could. Right. Yeah. Uh, and especially since the the dock also has like regular USB ports in it. Mm-hmm. So um, the games that are distributed for the switch uh are going to be either digital downloads or you get it on a cartridge so very similar to the 3ds in that in that regard right um although i believe the cartridges are a little bit slimmer a little bit smaller uh and so it's it's not going to be backwards compatible with the 3ds game cartridges that is kind of unfortunate but i'm betting on the fact that they'll remake a couple of really popular games for mm-hmm. the switch yeah yeah i would yeah it'll be interesting to see how they deal with going from the dual screen experience of the 3ds to a single screen mm-hmm. um especially since i've i have not seen them showing the switch being used like sideways you know in portrait right. instead of landscape um which is how most like tablets do it when you're emulating a 2ds or a 3ds or you know whatever Mm -hmm. um is they they just have you holding it in portrait and then they display both screens well i do know the ios ports for the ace attorney games uh solved that problem by putting the uh the touchscreen menu when you turned it into into landscape mode the touchscreen menu just went into a secondary um button Mm. press Mm -hmm. so just it just took one extra press to get to that menu yeah okay yeah. And it's the same as, you know, when you're playing Pokemon on your 3DS, you'll you just hit X to access your menu, which is down on the bottom anyway. You don't have to touch it. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh and needless to say, it will not be taking Wii U uh game discs either because huh. it does not have an optical drive. <laughs> <laughs> Imagining I'm I'm trying to imagine a, a tablet that has a CD drive in it. I'm just thinking about anything portable that functioned with optical drives it's never been good no yeah um and this is actually taking me back to like the original ipod which had a a literal spinning disc hard drive in it uh which is ridiculous Mm -hmm. uh and finally finally we get to the most uh exciting spec from from my point of view uh and that is the processor so nintendo has 
teamed up with NVIDIA on this device, and uh, it is rocking some sort of NVIDIA Tegra processor. They haven't told us exactly which one. Um, but from history, uh, I expect that it is probably the X1, the Tegra X1, um, possibly even a little bit more powerful than the one that's in the uh, NVIDIA Shield Android TV console. Um, cause the, uh, I've noticed in some of the videos that the, um, the switch is definitely like thicker than mm -hmm. most tablets that, that you see. Um, so thick in fact that it has like a, 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 it seems like there's, there's a vent in the back or on the top for, uh, for the fans to output. Right. right. So if it's keeping itself cool, um, it can probably be a little bit higher clocked than, uh, yeah. than the tablet version. They haven't told us how much it weighs, which no. is a little bit of a concern if it's that thick for me. Yeah. But I suppose the uh, format of having the the controllers locked in on the sides wouldn't would take some of the pressure off of that. Probably, yeah. Um, and yeah, and it and it could be that it's it's thick, but it's not heavy, right? Because mm -hmm. part of the reason that it's thick is because it has those slots on the sides to put the controllers in, right? Um, and uh, and so that's that that dictates like its minimum width that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's also interesting to note in on the Nvidia front that this is definitely like the most Nvidia device that I've ever seen that isn't like branded by Nvidia. It right? looks a lot more Nvidia than Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it seems like they they kind of took like the strategy that in, that Nvidia has been doing for the last couple of years, which is like making portable devices that can also hook up to your TV easily and and have like wireless controllers, um, and and then you know dropping the whole like PC gaming side of that, uh, and adding on Nintendo's like expertise with controllers and like just the 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 player experience, right? right. Um, and it's, I mean, this is a really cool partnership. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's uh, taking Nintendo to a whole different level, I think. Mm -hmm. it The Switch doesn't look like a child's toy. Tr right. As opposed to everything from the past. Especially, the, like, the Wii U's uh, secondary screen, right? Yeah. It's, it's gamepad. Uh, that thing was just, like, it looked like a, a plastic... Just, yeah, toy. just a chunk of plastic, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It, it looks like stuff you'll buy at Target for your four-year-old. But this looks like an actual gamer's console. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's also worth noting that NVIDIA is the one who's, who provided the API for uh, the developers who are going to be making games for this. So uh, it might be like a very similar development process to uh, games that were made for the previous Shield um you know, the Shield lineup. So we might, you know, I'm hopeful that we're going to see games that were made for like Android or for the Shield devices coming over to the uh, Switch. Yeah, I would like to see that library um, added mm -hmm. on to Nintendo's homespun stuff. Yeah, yeah. Especially since it has like the capacitive screen. So it actually supports like multi-touch and everything. Mm -hmm. um, interesting that they never actually showed anybody touching the screen for any reason. That is interesting. Hmm. Mm. So they're definitely not emphasizing that side, but I just, I want to play Hearthstone on this device, you know? Yeah. I don't know why you want to do that. I like I'm also I'm also thinking now, how much am I going to use the touch screen since I have the controllers latched onto the side? Right. Yeah. Um, it does make it, if you're holding it from either side, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to reach into the middle to touch the screen because then one of your wrists is like providing all the torque for mm -hmm. this very wide device yeah um though it all depends on how heavy it is right correct like i can hold my nvidia shield tablet which is uh just about as wide as as i think the switch is um but it's it's you know thinner and and pretty darn light so mm -hmm. um all right let's talk about that switch dock um so this is the the unit that sits in front of your tv uh and uh and you latch the tablet down into it um to hook it up to your television um, so it has an HDMI port in it, um, and, uh, the switch will support resolutions up to 1080p when it is plugged into a, a television. It's not bad. Yep. Um, I th I think that they were definitely emphasizing being able to run higher powered games than upping the resolution, right? That's fair. Because like the NVIDIA Shield, uh, 
Android TV console can do up to 4K, at least for video. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also has a few USB ports in it. Um, so that's uh, one of them is a USB 3.0. Two of them are USB 2.0. Um, and I'm actually, I'm not sure if they are USB type A or USB type C. So that'll definitely determine what what types of extra things you can plug into there. I hope that they are USB type C. Okay. Just because that's the future at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And since we're quickly approaching the point where USB type C is going to be the most common, uh, that would be much better fr- future proofing. Right. Yeah, just just jump into it. Yeah, right? don't look back. They're jumping into a lot of this already. <laughs> May as well. Now, uh, something that they're that they're not abandoning, of course, is the Ethernet port. No. Great. Good. Good. Yes. yes. We um, need that. So yeah, so you won't have to have it on Wi-Fi while it's plugged into the television. That's good. Um, and uh, the Switch dock, you can get one. So so the whole package when you buy a Nintendo Switch initially mm-hmm. comes with. Um, the switch itself, the dock, um, a controller, a grip for the controller, a few cables and stuff, and the whole thing costs three hundred dollars, right? Right. The dock you can buy like an extra one or a replacement or something like that by itself for ninety dollars. That is a lot of money for what is essentially a couple ports. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 basically like a USB hub. Right. Yeah. That uh, or or like a dongle. I could that... weld this together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like three D printed or hard. something like that. Yeah. So that yeah, this is the most baffling one of the add-ons to me in terms of price. Mm, it's not the most baffling to me, um, but we're get we'll get to that. Yeah, and yeah, and you'll see pretty soon that um, yeah, all these extra ones uh, they they cost up quite a bit more than you would expect them to. So moving on to this controller that we've uh, referenced a few times but haven't really described. Um, so the, the controller is kind of the, the most new and unique part of this console um, because it, it comes in two parts. So the Joy-Con itself, is, it, that's what they call the controller, um, it comes with a left side and a right side. And that allows them to have lots and lots of different configurations for it. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, in the video that they released back in October, they started off with a guy in his living room playing Skyrim? No, he was playing Breath of the Wild. Uh, And, uh, yeah, of course they started off with with their own game. Yeah. Uh, So he's sitting on his couch, and he's got the controller, and it looks kind of like a normal controller, maybe a little bit boxy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. and then his dog barks at him because it needs to go outside for a walk. And so he takes the two sides of the controller, he like sep- separates it into two different halves, and then slides those two halves into the sides of the tablet and lifts it out of the dock. Super slick. Yeah. Looks real nice. Does that actually work? Uh, I would assume so. Like, you don't have to go through any menus like, hey, I'm switching to the tablet now. Oh, no, yeah. It, it just showed um, when when he slid it out of the dock, uh, the, you know, the screen turned off on the television and just turned on on the on the tablet and Interesting. boom there we go um hopefully yeah hopefully that transition is a lot more smooth than on my shield tablet because plugging in hdmi i have to wait for like a minute and a half for it to really figure itself out yeah but your shield tablet is kind of a problem in general yeah it, i have to wait for it uh in a lot of transitional situations um so so yeah so that's two configurations that we've seen so far for the controller. Yeah. Um, is as a regular wireless controller in your living room uh, or uh, attached to the tablet itself for, like, walking around using it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can also, like, if you have the uh, tablet on a table with its little kickstand dealio, um, you could unhook the two controllers and use them just as separate halves, right? Right. Um, not, not hooked into the grip. Um, So that allows them to be, like, two independent motion controllers. Mm -hmm. Um, You can can also uh, hand one of those halves to another person. And then each of you has one controller for, like, a split-screen game. Um, I think they showed, like, Mario Kart being used that way. um, Because then each half just has one analog stick. Right. um, And you you use that. And it it also has, like, a couple of shoulder buttons for each half. Okay. Um, it seems like that configuration is going to be pretty darn cramped for, like, adult-sized hands. Yeah. 
Especially if you've got, like, long, spindly fingers like mine. I am a small person with small hands, so I think I will be fine. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm hoping that games that they build with that situation in mind are going to be, like, shorter play sessions so that I don't, like, get carpal tunnel or anything. Uh, well, I'm thinking about Mario Kart, and technically that is short play session, but you're not gonna, you're not gonna just play it for a short amount of time. Right, yeah. You're going to get invested in that. Yep. Um... And then the final controller configuration is uh, not using the Joy-Con at all, um, but using, like, the the Pro Controller, which looks pretty darn similar to the Pro Controller that they made for the Wii U. Similar but not the same? Uh, I'm not, you know... Like, I feel like... would Is... Are we able to use our Wii Pro Controllers on this? I don't know. That would be great. That would and be that great. That would make perfect sense. Um... It seems like the button layout is exactly the same. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they change, like, the shape of the controller at all. Um, but, but if you get an matter. adapter, I would, I would imagine. Well, what is, how does the Wii U Pro Controller plug in? Is it just wireless? I think it's just wireless, yeah. Mm. So if they use, like, I, would, I don't see why they wouldn't use the same protocol. Right. For their own devices, yeah. Um, they also, the Joy-Cons have a few other features such as uh the right one has nfc so that you can do like amiibo stuff Mm -hmm. whatever um they come with like um wrist strap attachments uh so that you can use them uh as as motion controllers and not worry about like throwing them across the room um and uh they also apparently have like the most detailed rumble feedback possible it was demonstrated a little weirdly, though. Yeah, definitely. So the, the guy in the video, uh, he was holding one of the Joy-Cons, and he was kind of shaking it around, and he was like, what's that? What, do I feel something inside? And then they like kind of overlaid an image of a glass with an ice cube in it. And he's like, I can feel an ice cube inside. And then they like the image like dropped another ice cube into the the uh glass and he's like oh and i can tell you know the difference between like one ice cube and two ice cubes and then they like filled the whole thing with water and he's like mm, water and he like grabs the glass and then drinks the water it was really strange and they didn't claim it can tell you it it didn't claim that you can get feedback for anything other than that yeah like you can tell that there's two ice cubes in a glass but can you tell that there's you know something about to attack you who knows we're going to have lots of Ice Cube-based games from yeah. now on, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, no, seriously. I, I, I assume that it can simulate other things, but uh, that was what they decided to demonstrate it with. It's fine. It's just a little bit strange. A little bit strange. That sums up Nintendo, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in terms of their presentations and stuff. Um, now, the Switch control, or, sorry, the Switch console can have up to eight Joy-Cons attached to it at once. Mm -hmm. Um, which is, of course, a very important number once again. (laughs) Yes, Um, it is. Though I'm not sure if that refers to, like, eight Joy-Con holes or eight half of the Joy-Con, right? Because sometimes they consider the left and the right ones to be separate. Sometimes they consider them to be together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that it means eight uh, whole Mm Joy-Cons just because that would support the most gameplay. Right. Pretty hard to play, like, Super Smash Bros. with half of a Joy-Con. Right. Yeah. Getting eight Joy-Cons is going to be difficult, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, before we get into that, though, the color options. Oh, yeah. So you can get uh, either a gray Joy-Con, or you can get a Joy-Con where one of them is red and one of them is blue. And that's disgusting. I love it. Nope. I love red and blue color schemes for some reason. I want just blue. Or just red. Yeah. I don't want both. And it, it seems like uh, you couldn't even, like, buy them and then, like, you know, mix them up, right? Because mm-hmm. I think all of the left ones are going to be blue and all of the right ones are going to be uh, red. So. I mean, that's good for remembering which is which, yeah. but I still don't want that. Red on the right. Mm-hmm. If that's not true, I am going to give you hell. <laughs> it's, uh, hmm. Let's look it up. Let's. Uh, I can. I'll just Google image search the the switch real quick. They also they also are coming with a wrist strap attachment. Yes. Oh crap! I was wrong. You were wrong. It's red on the left. Why would they do wait, that? Wait. No. The other. Wait. No. The other image is showing. What? I'm so confused. I'm seeing two different images. One of which has red on the. 
No, it looks like red's on the right. I was right. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that's a perfect mnemonic, so why would they mess that up? Um, because they don't... Okay, somebody's pulling my leg now. Here's an image of one that's orange and gray. I like that. I do like that. Leave it alone. We have other things to talk about. I know, I know. So... I'm gonna put stickers on it. How much do these things cost, these Joy-Cons? These Joy-Cons cost... $80. $80 for a left and a right. Mm-hmm. Or $50 if you just want a left or a right. <laughs> and an extra, and a grip, a charging grip is $30. So the charging grip is actually worth talking about because it's different than the grip that comes with the console itself. Um, so the, the grip that comes in the bundle uh, just attaches your left and right ones together so mm-hmm. that they feel like one controller. The charging grip is one that you, I think you plug it in somewhere, you know, charge up a little battery that's inside the charging grip, and then whenever you have your two Joy-Cons slid into the charging grip, it'll charge them. Okay. Um, which is important because, like, the Joy-Cons normally only charge when you have them slid into the console itself. So if you spend most of your time with the switch plugged into your television and you're across the room trying to play with, you know, your wireless controllers, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, They're going to run out of battery after a while and you will either have to like go and slide them into the console and then take the console off of the TV because who's going to play like holding on to the joy cons while they're in the dock. Right. Um, So yeah, the charging grip might be worth getting there. I do have a question. Um, So you get, so it's $80. To get a set of Joy-Con. Mm-hmm. That's a really weird phrase, but... It's like a pair of pants. Yeah. You know? A set of Joy-Con. Uh, so you pay $80 for that. Do you get a grip with that left and right Joy-Con? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a good question. Let's go and click on that link and take a look. Because it seems a little iffy to not get a grip. I mean, all of it's a little bit iffy. Uh, no, it looks like... The, the Joy-Con controllers, the $80 yeah. thing, does not come with a... So your $80 extra set of Joy-Con does not have a grip coming with it. Right. Um, and most games you'll want to play about four players, probably, let's say. You need three extra Joy-Con controllers, right? That yeah. is $240. $240. None of them have grips. That's almost the price of the entire console. Yeah, yeah. For three controllers. That's so crazy, yeah. The other option is the Pro Controller, which it, we had talked about earlier. It also, it costs $70. Does not come with the console. Yeah. <laughs> so you can pay your $80 to get your extra Joy-Con with no grip. Or you can pay $70 to use your standard Pro Controller. Mm-hmm. I don't like either of these options. No, no. That's really expensive. Especially considered that considering that Nintendo is not selling this console at a loss. Right. So it's three hundred dollars. Um they're not it's not at a loss, which means that they're making money on it or they're breaking even. Uh so let's say let's say you get one controller in it, and they're claiming that's eighty dollars. Mm-hmm. You're getting the uh, Switch dock, which they're claiming costs ninety dollars, so that's one hundred and seventy dollars. So you're getting this fantastic tablet console for how much? One hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, that is what they're saying here. That's a steal. That is wrong. Yeah, very. They cannot charge this much, especially when they're promoting uh, playing with other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's ridiculous. And yeah, I mean that yeah, they have shown, of course, that you can play with another person, you know, with the left and right ones split up between two people. But that is that is one very specific situation, right? Mm-hmm. That's not going to work in most situations. No. And you can, of course, connect all the switches, which I'm sure is what they're going for. Everybody mm-hmm. buys a switch; we have no problem. Yeah. But they're still marketing this to families mm-hmm. who have more than one child. And they're not going to each have a switch. Probably not. Probably not. Like unless they happen to be a family that already has a TV for each person's bedroom, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Something ridiculous like that. But this is not 
the kind of scheme that I want to see happening right now. I am going to make your day right now, though. Yep. The Joy-Con controller packs that you can get, uh, you can get two blue ones or two red ones. Thank God! So the reason I was mistaken about that is because when you buy the Switch itself, you can choose either one that's both gray or one that has a right red and a blue left. Okay. Yeah. So you can't get, like, your first pair of Joy-Con as both blue or both red. Just yeah. the, the extra ones that you buy on their own. I suppose that takes a little bit more pressure off of sales because there are going to be people going in being like, I want just a blue one. I right. want just a red mm-hmm. one. No, it's either gray or multi. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, finally, the, the final piece of <laughs> hardware accessory that you can buy is the Joy-Con wheel. Which... So you can play Mario Kart <laughs> with the motion controls working <laughs> just as well as they used to. Yep. Yeah. Yay. You uh, can get a pair of Joy-Con wheels. That is a set of two Joy-Con wheels for $15. And they are trying to sell us all these other controllers for that much. $15. I wonder, it, it's got to take up almost as much plastic to make those wheels as it takes to make the dock. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. 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 Uh, all that price point is really questionable, and I do hope they hear some customer feedback and bring it down within the next either couple of months or, you know, a season. Right, right. Because that's really excessive, since we know they're not making that at a loss. No, yeah. Speaking of, um, that the bundle yeah. cost of okay. $300, mm-hmm. super reasonable. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love that That price. is very reasonable, and I'm amazed that they're not selling that at a loss, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's incredible. I'm very pleased with that price point. I'm not pleased with the controllers. <laughs> it's got to be... So I bet you that a huge part of that is that the, like the R&D costs of the processor itself have already been paid for, right? Because yeah. NVIDIA developed this processor like a little while ago for their own devices. Mm -hmm. So they've already gone through the whole process of trying to recoup that, that money. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then, and then all of the accessories, I suppose, you know, that Nintendo made that, that was actual R and D cost. Yes. Yeah. That Um, still doesn't justify these controller prices. No, 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 not at all. Um, But yeah, especially like thinking about the, the kinds of tablets that you can get for $300. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is pretty comparable. Um, aside from, like, the, the screen resolution of 1280 by 720, um, quite a bit lower than we're used to seeing on tablets, but it's going to look just fine. Yeah, because it's a tablet. You don't need to pack no, everything. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, frankly, like, the Android Pixel Race has gotten way out of hand. <laughs> so no, nobody needs, like, 400 pixels per square inch or whatever right. the heck they're they're putting in phones these days and this this uh does differ from normal tablets in that it's primarily a gaming console and we're not mm-hmm. sure if it has any application outside of that yet we're not right. sure what they're offering us through the nintendo eShop for apps like mm-hmm. youtube or social media mm-hmm. or even web browsing we're not sure how that's going to be working yet so you're not going to use it for working on or multitasking yeah you're going to be using this for a a keyboard onto it (laughs) to type up my google docs nasty (laughs) um though i mean that that is kind of worth noting here is that um since it is like hardware wise so darn similar to an android tablet um i do i do wish that it could run just straight up android apps and i know that that's way too much to ever ask right. uh, especially of a nintendo console um but like yeah I, I we're starting to get to the point where like i leave the house on a trip and i want to take five different devices with me because they all do different things mm-hmm. um when you know realistically i could be doing all of those things with like one or two devices right. because we do we have the technological ability to do that right it's just brand competition at this point exactly i do believe that like i am really hopeful that nintendo will be bringing a lot of android apps and Mm -hmm. uh games to the switch because it is fully capable of that and would expand the library a lot 
And we've seen that kind of thing happening before, right? With Amazon, when they started up their Fire tablet, you know, they, they just have their own Android app store. Right. Uh, where a lot of developers, like, release things both on Google Play and on the Amazon Fire, whatever they call it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it works out, you know. Right. There's 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 room for both in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. I think that would be a uh, pretty great step for Nintendo too, to get ahead of to if they're combining their mobile and console um, ideas mm -hmm. to incorporate even more mobile capabilities into it. That would encourage a lot more uh, people to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since the we'll talk about the the game lineup that they have uh, in a, in a little bit, but it's not as wide as most other like dedicated consoles right. at launch. Um, so yeah, I wonder I wonder if this is going to encourage Nintendo to bring, um, you know, for example, like Mario Kart Run, which launched hmm. only on iOS. Like, will they build it for Android since? you know that that would be like a similar process to bringing it to the switch i don't know would they even bring it to the switch i don't know that's the thing but I mean, <laughs> or are they using those games as an advertisement for people to buy nintendo products probably yeah they're just furthering than mario mario's reach yes um now you mentioned that yeah the timing here is really important in terms of the details that they give versus when launches mm -hmm. um when is launch launch is oh shoot March 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> March 3rd. Um, so that's coming up in uh, just a couple of months, really. A month and a half. A month and a half, even. yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are most of the way through January right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And March 3rd. Yeah, that's like, what? Yeah, I guess six weeks or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's uh, real fast here. And uh, for those of us who uh, are really itching to, like, try this thing out, um, they do have several events throughout, like, North America where you can go and try out the Nintendo Switch beforehand. I expect the lines will be terrible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, they, they're, like, telling people, like, don't start lining up before 7 a.m. because we won't let you get make a line <laughs> before 7 a.m. kind of thing. Um, and GameStop has already sold out of their launch allotment. Yeah. Like, yeah. holy crap. <laughs> worth noting again that the launch price is 300 and that is incredibly reasonable so people are buying this yep yep that's crazy and there are only five confirmed games for this uh, at five games that are going to be coming out on march 3rd on march 3rd yep. okay so do we want to talk about the games right now then since, yeah let's since talk we're about already kind of talking about those we've been looking at them yeah all right so the the games that they showed off in the presentation, um, they of course started off with a couple of like brand new games that have never been seen before that are new for the Switch. Um, the first one is kind of like their, it's like their Wii Sports Resort, right? Okay. It's, it's supposed to show off like the capabilities and what the idea is behind this new console. Right. Um, so in One Two Switch, all of the games they're they're kind of like mini games, mm -hmm. uh, and they all use the Joy Cons independently. So you hand one to your friend, and you both uh, are playing against each other. But unlike most like split screen type games, um, instead of facing the screen and sitting next to your friend, what you're doing is you're standing like facing your friend, and then both of you have the screen kind of in your peripheral vision. And so they've built a bunch of games uh, that involve like kind of reflexes or like watching your opponent to see what they're going to do and like reacting to them um so like one of them is a western uh draw right mm -hmm. um, a showdown and uh so you both like start off with your controller at your hip and then uh and then the the console will like you know make a noise or whatever to to indicate that it's time to shoot and you bring up your controller and try and shoot your opponent before they shoot you so Kind of violent. Yeah, uh, <laughs> a little bit. The the other one that I remember is also kind of violent, uh, where one player has, like, uh, an imaginary samurai sword, right? Mm -hmm. And the other player has to try and catch that samurai sword as they bring it down, as they sweep it down, before it hits them. Interesting. Yeah, so they, like, clap their hands in front of them uh, to try and... Both very violent. Yeah. I'm, I just had a thought. That would be fun to pair with augmented reality. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, the second game we have is called ARMS. I, all in caps. All in caps. ARMS. ARMS. It's very strange. 
it's a little bit like me boxing, uh, but gone even crazier. In a good way. In a good way, yeah. Uh, so it's like boxing, but your arms are long springs, and you're using two Joy-Cons to maneuver them around mm-hmm. and try to box your with your opponent. And it's really kind of whimsical. Yeah. Almost. So, yeah, it's very colorful. All of the uh, characters have fun names, like Ribbon Girl and... Spring Boy. I, I'm making up Spring Boy. That's probably not the right one. Um, but yeah, like it. I think it's going to have a fair amount of strategy to it, actually, because you can do things like, you know, you punch and then you can rotate your hand like left or right to curve your punch yeah. in, su- in one direction. Um, you move around the arena by uh, tilting both Joy-Con halves together. Um, and you can also like block your opponent's... Uh, um, attacks by like crossing your hands in front of your in front of your chest so that'll be that'll be interesting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's that's um the main motion control stuff that they're showing off here yep yep um the uh, next one is splatoon 2 which i'm really excited for (laughs) i never got to play splatoon 1 because i don't own a wii u which i very much regret and my brother never bought splatoon so and I always wanted to play it because I'm not good at shooters, but that looks so fun and so colorful. Um, it's coming in not at launch, but in the summer of 2017. Yep. Uh, it takes place canonically two years after Splatoon does. So what they're, they're saying is uh, fashions have changed. There are new weapons discovered. And there are also in-game events planned for after launch. Which is which kind is, of crazy. Yeah, that is really interesting. I hope they'll be... More interesting than the Pokemon in-game events that they have given us over the years, which is basically just log in and get a Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy who they had on stage to announce Splatoon 2 uh, was adorable. He, like, they bring up the lights and here's this guy in, like, these goofy sunglasses and he's wearing a lab coat and he's got a couple of giant plastic uh, pistols, like water pistols in his hands. And (laughs) so he's, like introduces himself as a researcher who's been like following these uh these squid species that can like turn themselves into humanoids uh and and trying to you know figure out what their deal is and uh and and so then he's talking about yeah some of the new stuff that's coming in the game um and anytime that he says something like halfway dramatic he does this like dramatic pose with both of the uh guns so in the shape of a two in a oh that's what that was did you not realize oh oh and now I get it. Yeah, he was okay. He was making his body into the shape of a two. Yep. Yeah, I totally missed that. I just <laughs> thought he was being a t- total dork. No, there's it's a dork with reason. Yeah, which is even more of a dork, I think. Yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> it really is. There's a new Mario game coming out. Uh huh. Yeah. So Super Mario Odyssey is what this one is called. Um, it's got a few new things. Uh, I think this is the first time that they are sending Mario outside of the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah. Um and. It's gonna get crazy. So some of the levels that they showed were like Mario running around in a normal human city. Everybody is freaking out about that because Mario is very, very small. Yeah. We are not sure if he is a human or some like this vaguely humanoid thing. Yeah. Is like, he a hobbit? He's like, I think he's smaller than the hobbits because he comes yeah. up to like their knees. Yeah. The the humans who are walking around the city. He's so tiny. We don't know what he is anymore. I, yeah. This whole world has just been turned around. Um, His hat is now a very important part of the game. It has eyes. All right. So I'm not sure if it's like sentient, if it's going to talk to you or what, Um, but it adds new gameplay options like... uh. Its main move seems to be that he can throw the hat and it kind of like goes out for for a few feet and then boomerangs back to him. I feel like this was a mechanic in an older Mario game, but I don't remember mm. what. Um, so yeah, it enables things like not only attacking enemies who are a little farther away, but also like uh, I saw a brief clip of Mario uh, trying to jump from one building to another, but it was you know too far to make. So he throws his hat and then jumps onto his hat before it boomerangs back to him to you know essentially do like a double jump right yeah so love the physics oh yeah very real and so odyssey is going to be more of a sandbox game than a level by level Mm -hmm. type of thing which yeah for some reason they were comparing that aspect to like super mario 64 
but I'm not super familiar with. Yeah, I'm. I'm that. not either. I played very old Mario and yeah. never really kept up with the franchise. From from what I remember of 64 was like there was the main hub world, and then like you would go through doorways to like yeah. the other. Basically, world. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they also then had a few third party games uh, that they that they were talking about. Um, Skyrim. Uh, which was, of course, one of the games that was in the announcement trailer back in October. Um, they didn't really say anything new about it. Um, I think it's just going to be like a direct port of the game mm-hmm. to to the Switch console. That's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. Like mobile Skyrim. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't want that? Yeah, I, like short of like taking a laptop with you, which you can still only use like when you're sitting at a table. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time that we'll be able to play Skyrim on the go. Yeah. yeah. Um, they also brought in a guy from EA to talk about FIFA. Um, so they're trying to do those sports games. Sports, yay! Woo. Um, by the way, the guy from EA uh, started off his little part of the presentation by saying that he and his wife loved Nintendo so much that they named their firstborn son Luigi. That's <sighs> really questionable. Yeah. That. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm so sorry, child. Um, and then, and then, they bring out the big one, the one that everybody was waiting for, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. They had Ooh. kind of an extended trailer for that one, um, and they also spent a really long time teasing the launch date for it. Um, like, they, they had all of the different executives from, uh, you know, Nintendo Europe and N- Nintendo US, like, going like, hey, do you know when the when Breath of the Wild is launching? No, I don't. Do you? And, you know, mm-hmm. uh, it's March 3rd. It's com- oh. it's coming out on launch day. Well, yeah. If they didn't, then I would be very, very displeased, and I think most people would. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because that that'd just be silly. Yeah. If they if launching they, like, it without teased it a bunch and then like, oh, it's October. Yeah. <laughs> also, launching your game without a big title like that would be launching your console without a big title like yeah, that would be. Yeah. 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 Oh boy, that's a move. But no, they're doing it. Uh, uh, I, I I mean, they have launched other consoles without zelda right away right i think well without zelda but what did they have yeah i don't know i mean the wii came out way back in 2005 so i don't really remember yeah but i i definitely remember people getting excited when a zelda game was finally coming to it right Mm Mm-hmm. let's see the wii u launch title came out with a mario game um i believe sorry just checking here because I don't remember much about the Wii U because I was excited about it, but I didn't do anything. Yeah. Um, so if we want to compare to other launch titles or launch launch lineups, mm-hmm. um, but just by like sheer number of them, um, yeah, the Switch definitely has less than most others. Um, I, I believe it has far fewer launch titles than like the 3DS did, um, and. One of the other concrete numbers that I've seen is comparing it to the PS4 launch. Um, the PS4 had 140 titles, I think, that were announced mm. at launch. Um, to like, I think the, the the those 140 were coming like within the first year or something like that. And the Switch has 80. Yeah. Um, that are coming in the first year. So as opposed to the Wii U, which had a total of 32 launch titles. Mm, like right on, on launch day. the day. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, so five is like nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Um which is yeah, which is why like um <laughs> if they had taken the approach of like making it into a general purpose computing device, uh that would just like alleviate that entire problem. Absolutely. Because then, you know, the the purchasing like the, the purchase decision is not just based on the games. Right. But when you have a, a dedicated console, that's all you're gonna base it off of. And because of this very very small library that's currently announced Mm -hmm. i'm really hoping that they take advantage of the android library right yeah because that's it's insane to launch with that that small of a number yeah and that's and that's one of those things that like um that i've always loved about being a pc gamer is like i i built my first pc right Mm -hmm. and immediately the library of games that was available to me is in the thousands. Yeah. Is in the, you know, possibly millions if we go all the way to, like, really weird Flash games that are <laughs> available online, right? Right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one of those big challenges that, that, uh, that they face when making, like, dedicated gaming systems is 
and and that's why they rely so much on exclusive titles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which is unfortunate because I I mean I don't like it when we have a fragmented world like that. I know you don't, but that's what competition is. Yeah, I know. That's how our that's how we grow. Yeah. Let's move on to talking about some online services. Oh boy. Because that's an area where Nintendo has always kind of fell flat on their face. Yeah, they. <laughs> I don't think they quite understand what people want from their online services. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. And it, this time, they're uh, tripping on their own feet in a completely different way. Yeah, which is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So, okay, so first up, let's talk about the stuff that you can get online for free. Um, you get access to the Nintendo eShop. All right. Good. Kind of need that. Yes. Uh, I need to be able to give you money, Nintendo. Yeah. It's rather important to Please let me give you money. <laughs> <laughs> um, they allow you to manage your friends list. Okay. How do we... Do we add friends codes? Do we mm, add IDs? Uh, I... Th- how does this work? I forget exactly what the details were, but I know that they are not using like the the street pass system. Is that what it was called? Yeah, before? they're not using the street pass system um, because we gave up on that a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not really sure how you're going to add a friends list. We for the 3ds and 2ds, uh, there was the friend codes mm-hmm. that were unique to your device, but I'm not sure if that's going to carry over. Yeah. You know what would be great is if we all just had accounts with, like, oh, profile names. That would be and great. profile pictures. Are they going to do that? We still don't yeah, know. Yeah, I don't know. How about achievements? Like, things like, you know, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I'm not sold on achievements, but whatever. But, like, you know, some sort of community system, yeah. right? Um, but Nintendo has always been about the face-to-face community. Sure, but you know that doesn't I mean? work when your friends are in Australia. No, it doesn't. But Nintendo's still subscribing to their little view of the world. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, one thing that I know you can definitely do uh, is sharing screenshots. Um, and I mm. believe they're relying on you sharing those to other like social media sites. Okay. So we're uploading them directly to other social media sites. Which implies... That we are able to access those social media sites from our Switch. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Which, which, which also hmm. brings up a concern of mine, um, which is like, for example, we talked about like, you know, you can prob- you'll can you probably be able to watch like YouTube and Netflix on it, right? right? Because YouTube and Netflix have been available like on the Wii and the Wii U and stuff. But like, not all services are going to be available on there, right? Yeah. Um. So, will Nintendo have a way for me to easily, like, get those screenshots out of, you know, like, will I be able to easily upload them to Google Drive or something like that? The real question is, are we going to have a profile (laughs) that we can upload things to? Right. And access that from a website. Right. Ooh, that would be great. That would be great. What What a a concept. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Um, and we have a parental controls app, mm-hmm. which is a really strangely worded segment of yeah. the presentation. And I'm almost, I'm almost certain that what they mean by that is a separate app on a separate device, like Android or iOS, where you go to control the settings on the Switch itself. Now that's very strange. Um, they have been talking about making a, the switch, a network hub. So using, using other devices to communicate with the switch and make it like a hub in your home. Mm -hmm. That's kind of strange. Uh, I also don't think parental controls should be, or will be exclusively an app on, on a separate device because it's ridiculous to expect that everyone has a smartphone or a smart device. Mm Mm-hmm. It's uh, ridiculous to expect that um, people wouldn't use the Switch to control itself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, like, um, this is a mobile device, right? Right. So you can easily just walk out of Wi-Fi distance. And so then if you're, like, if you know, if you're relying on the fact that you can control your kid's console from afar, if they just walk out to the park or if they turn off the Wi-Fi, like... What are you going to do about it? Exactly, right? Um, I do imagine that there will be a parental controls app 
for smart devices that you can manage settings from there, mm-hmm. which is perfectly fine and feasible, and that's nice to have. Uh, but I don't think that will be the only thing, nor the primary function. Right, right. Uh, it was just worded very strangely. And it seems like they're trying to move, make Nintendo a network in the home that's yeah. centered around the Switch rather than the Switch being the only thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Though, yeah, it's it's interesting that they, they're kind of simultaneously making the Switch be like the only device that they have to do, right? Mm-hmm. Because it covers both the home console and the portable side right. of things. But then, like, yeah, having it as a hub for more devices in the future once they come out with those yeah. things. Yeah, and that ties into stuff for the monthly subscription, which yes. is $10 a month. I believe so. $10 or ten ninety nine, oh. Around that range. Uh, but they have an online lobby and voice chat app. Now, is that an app that's going to be on the Switch, or is that an app that is on your phone? That's the big question. That is the big question. Uh, it was presented in such a manner that it seems like it's an app for your smart devices, which I assume includes the Switch at this point. However, I think it's really strange that you will be controlling your lobby and voice chat from a different device than what you're playing on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since, like, the device that they are proposing this for can definitely already chat with other people and call other people. Even though we're not sure if it has a microphone. Oh, yeah, the Switch itself? Yeah. Yeah. Does Um, it have a headphone jack, by the way? Definitely, yes. Okay. Yes, it has a headphone jack up on the top. Um, Yeah, we're not sure if it has a microphone, so Uh, maybe it can't? It it would seem strange for it to be a tablet without a microphone. It would. Yeah. I mean, that's such an easy thing to put in. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, if you get the monthly subscription, then uh, you get a free NES or SNES title each month. However, this is not like like Microsoft Live, no, Xbox, Xbox Gold. Live Gold, um, but... where you get a title and then keep it forever. Um, this is, you get it for a month, and then if you want to keep playing that title after that month, then you got to buy it. Eh, I think that's fine. Uh... I know you don't like it because you're used to having free cheap game, free or cheap games constantly because you're a PC gamer. Yeah. Uh, but... I think a month is a perfectly reasonable time frame for you to have this game in your library and play around with it and either beat it, see if you like it enough to buy it, or be like, no, what the hell? Yeah. And that's perfectly reasonable to me. And yeah, they're going to sell it to you. They're not going to give it to you for free. This is Nintendo. They make their money off of remaking everything constantly. They are not going to give you the originals or the second version. They're just not going to do it mm-hmm. if they could sell it to you. Yeah, my... it, it will probably be cheap, um, these virtual console games. Uh, yeah, so I, I may have... So when I said $10 a month earlier, mm-hmm. I may have been mistaking that for like $10 to buy one of these NES or SNES games. Okay. Um, yeah. So I I think that that's the price that they're selling them for. So what's the subscription? I'm not sure. Okay. I I don't even know. I don't I was just on their website and it did not have a specific price listed. So Okay. I'm not sure. So $10 for an NES or SNES SNES title. Fine. Whatever. Uh I can pick it up and play it for a while and be like, "Eh, no, I'm bored." But or I can beat it within that month. SNES or NES games don't take that long to beat. I know you have no time in your life, right? but people who are going to be playing are going to have the time in their life to beat it, especially if they're interested in the game and they know they only have that month time frame. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, there, it's very, very easy for, like, something like this to be available for a brief time, and then I just, like, I miss it because that just wasn't a good month for me to play it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... And but you can, like... I, I'm pretty sure all of this, you can still buy in the virtual console anyway. Oh, definitely, definitely. So it's not really relevant to missing it. Uh, you could just, you can buy it at any time. It's just that you get to play it for free for a month. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's great. Um, and yeah, I've, I've heard, I've heard arguments that like, um, 
they they wouldn't be making as much money by like like that if 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 people got to keep the game at the end of the month right mm-hmm. then they wouldn't be making as much money but like i would argue that allowing people to keep the game at the end of the month is going to be a larger incentive for people to sign up for the subscription service so then they'll be making more money via the subscription service however the subscription service also allows you to do online gameplay yes which is a huge factor for those of us who have friends not in living in our house right uh so that's a big one online gameplay and online lobby and voice chat i don't want to pay for it personally like i I would rather it be free, mm-hmm. yeah. but I'm going to pay the month subscription to have it. This actually just brought up in my mind a really strange situation mm. where like, um, you know, I mentioned that I want to be able to play Hearthstone on here, right? right. Hearthstone very clearly uses Blizzard's server structure for online gameplay. Mm-hmm. If they launched it on the Switch, I can almost guarantee you that Nintendo would not allow them to just use their own server structure and and you know they they would make the people who want to play hearthstone pay the subscription fee to have online play even though it's not really nintendo's problem right yeah it's not costing them anything to to maintain those servers for hearthstone do you think that's actually the case though like if we're talking uh hearthstone and other android games and apps Mm -hmm. do you think uh, Nintendo is going to force us to pay to be online at all? What do you mean? Yes? Like, what? But, I'm, like, what I'm saying is I'm sure that Nintendo would have, like, in their agreement that developers have to sign when mm-hmm. putting their, their game on, on the Switch, um, I'm sure that they would say, like, you cannot provide online gameplay unless, you know, the, the consumer is, is paying the subscription fee. I'm not sure that's the case. Because I feel like we see stuff like that all the time in Do like we? in digital marketplaces. Oh yeah, like um, on Android and iOS, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are trying to sell digital goods, right? So like right. If you're trying to sell MP3 files or video files or like in-app uh, 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 items and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, any in-app purchases that you have in there have to go through you know, either Google's or Apple's like payment system. And then they take a 30% cut, Mm -hmm. right? That like the platform holders have a lot of power to dictate that kind of thing. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I I really don't like that online gameplay as part of the subscription service. Cause then, cause then that, that almost guarantees that the games will not be cross platform, right? They Mm -hmm. will only be, you only be playable with other switch players. Right. Yeah. And that kind of, uh, kicks the idea out the window that they would be uh, collaborating with Android libraries. Yep. Yep. Which is really unfortunate. I hope they change that. Yeah. Because that seems a little bit excessive. Nvidia. They're doing a lot to make money off of this, and I'm not sure that it's going to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nintendo, I understand that you've been losing money recently, but like, I know you've still got fat stacks of cash. Yeah. You, you, you're not hurting yet. You don't have to sell your controller for $80. <laughs> it costs you about 30 cents to make it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, if you if you sell it for a lower price, people will buy more of it, and you'll make more money. How's that? Yeah. Business. Speaking of, speaking of money, one of the ways that they kept that initial bundle price down is that they didn't include any games with it, right? Right. So, so you're not going to be getting your Wii Sports Resort automatically. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, yeah, I mean, it definitely is good for somebody to have something to do with it right away right. when they buy it. Um, but on the other hand, that's always kind of been like, what if, I, what if I'm not interested in the, the games mm-hmm. that they have bundled in there? Yeah, like... Can... Like, why would I be paying extra for e- that exactly. that I don't want? Exactly, yeah. Let's talk briefly about how the Switch compares to other devices. Because mm-hmm. there there's there are several different categories that it's going to be competing with, right? Right. Um, so first up, let's talk about consoles. Okay. Um, so in terms of the xbox one and the playstation 4 i think that the nintendo switch stacks up really really well oh yeah 
Um, cause a lot of people are going to be complaining about like, oh, it's not nearly as graphically powerful and stuff like that. Um, but A, that's never been the point of like a Nintendo console. Mm-hmm. Not since the days when like the Genesis and the SNES were, you know, going no. at each other's throats. Um, but also if you really care about graphics, you're not going to be getting a console in the first place, right? Right. You're going to be like spending that extra dough to get a nice PC. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Switch just has that killer feature that you can just pick it up and yep. leave and especially for the 300 dollars price point which is what xbox one and ps4 are still hovering at mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. hell even the 3ds is ho- hovering at 250 the yeah. 3ds xl that's insane and for 300 dollars, you get this yeah it's it's in a very good position uh when compared to yeah the home consoles and compared to mobile devices the handheld uh, i'm sorry handheld handheld yeah gaming devices i mean there's early only nintendo to compare itself to yeah i mean you could you could bring in the vita um <laughs> in- vita's been out of commission for yeah how long inter okay yeah in terms of like a market player it's been out of commission in terms of like a piece of hardware it's hard to say whether it's more powerful like well it's probably it, it's almost most certainly more powerful than the vita yeah um which is uh which is nice because like the vita kind of set the standard for what what a handheld console could do mm-hmm. technologically um so yeah in in terms of the handheld market now it's the switch yeah it, all the way it's going to be um however we do need to also compare it to the mobile market so the smartphones and the tablets and everything mm-hmm. um and uh say what you will about like the control scheme that we've had to adopt for for you know devices that only have touch screens um but there are a lot of really good games out there on android and ios uh and and since they have the selling point that like these devices do basically everything in your life and not just gaming um that i think that really reduces the appeal of the switch for like for the mass market see i get where you're coming from but most people who are taking a look at the Switch are excited by the fact that it's a mobile Nintendo device. Right. Yeah. Not a mobile do-it-all device. Um, yeah, it, it kind of fails in the comparison to do everything on it, but that's not the point of it. Right. Um, if And if you're comparing it to your closest, its closest relative, your the Shield Nvidia tablet... Shield. Uh, it's far better. It far surpasses that uh, just in general for mm-hmm. gaming because what else are you buying a Shield tablet for if not for gaming? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when I when I bought the Shield tablet, I did so initially because uh, I was intrigued by its its uh, its feature that, where you could uh, stream to Twitch, which was like it, that was the only tablet that you could do so on at the time. Um, so yeah, it, it was the gaming factor that kind of brought me to it and the fact that you could stream PC games to it. Um, but those two features are the ones that I have not really used since the first year that I had it. And what do you do on it now? I read. Yep. You use it as an overpowered Kindle. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, a Kindle that has, that, that is an open platform. Yeah. And how much does the open platform matter if you're just reading on it? Well, it definitely does because, like, if I had a Kindle uh, and I can't import my books from any other library, that's a problem. Okay. Um, you know, whereas with with the uh, Nvidia Shield tablet, I can you know mess with my EPUBs and and do whatever. So I instead want of them. gaming on this gaming tablet, you read. Oh no! I mean, I use it for uh, Hearthstone once a week when I'm at Game Club. Once a week. But that, but like, to be fair, that is the only gaming that I really do these days at all. So right. it is also my primary gaming device. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think the Switch is going to bring a lot more to the to the tablet market than that. Just because it's Nintendo. People are buying this Nintendo thing because it is Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um I'm just saying that like it would it would have a much easier time of finding its niche in in people's lives Mm -hmm. if it could do more than just gaming right right like people like you know your lifestyle changes over time right Mm -hmm. i used to game like all the 
gosh darn time. And now I just, you know, I, I work and I come home and I prepare podcasts. So I'm fairly confident that the Switch will have other applications. Mm-hmm. It won't do everything, but you'll be able to do. It'll have a browser. It'll, it'll have. Yeah. yeah. It'll do enough. Um, and that's all you need it to do, really, when it's primarily a gaming device. Mm-hmm. Um, I think people are. I don't think people who are going for gaming tablets specifically are going to flock to this because the gaming tablet market is also the PC gamer market. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of the wild west. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very strange place. Yeah. Um. So I don't think that's entirely relevant. Um. To compare the Switch to. Mm-hmm. Because that's not the consumer base that it's going to appeal to. Right. Right. People who want gaming tablets are going to be the weirdos like you who like open source and indie games. And who and are willing to put forth the effort to like... Seek them out. To, to actually go and like get this thing working properly. Yeah. Do you know how many times I've wiped that tablet and like reinstalled the operating system on it? I don't know it? why you still try. Too many times. <laughs> uh. So with Nintendo backing that uh, tablet, it's going to, I think it's going to be very reliable. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be... Uh, just Nintendo exclusive, and that's what people are looking for. Yep. Yeah. Especially, I mean, yeah, coming <laughs> coming from you who uh, has bought several handheld devices specifically for one launch party that you had here at home. Okay, yeah. I specifically bought, first of all, the 3DS when it was uh, $300-ish. Bought that specifically for Pokemon. Mm-hmm. No question about it. I will absolutely buy any device that Pokemon comes out on if I don't have it. Then I lost that 3DS. I found that out two days before I was going to have a release party for Sun and Moon. And I went to buy... An, and when I picked up Sun and Moon, I just bought myself another 2DS because it was $80. I bought a 2DS specifically for one single game. And I do not even care. <laughs> I am going to buy the Switch if Pokemon comes out on it. Uh, I'm going to buy it anyway. But I'd definitely buy it if Pokemon comes out on it, because that's my jam. That's all I want out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Yeah. <laughs> and I, I just can't... You I... bought an entire tablet just because it could stream Twitch. Yeah. Well, I was I was curious about that feature, and I want to see if it actually worked. So you spent $300. Uh, Yeah. But also, I mean, like... And you make fun of me for spending $80. To play a game. Um, but I mean, I knew I knew that, you know, even if that wasn't feasible, that that, that was a form factor that had proven itself to me, right? I had owned 7-inch tablets before, and I knew that I could use them. And for I knew that I would be stuff. buying more Nintendo games than just Pokemon. Yeah. So, don't make fun of me. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. This has been uh, a Nexus special about the Nintendo Switch announcements. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns50. If you want to contact us, uh, you can find The Nexus on Twitter at The Nexus TV uh, or send us an email at thenexustv at gmail.com. I am Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck uh, or check out my website, ianrbuck.com, for links to other things that I make. And I am Savannah Hassel. You can find me on Twitter at EternallyAnna. Have a good one. <laughs>